Hi everyone, my name's James from the YouTube channel Plumber Parts and I'm here with Plumwell today to tell you about digital smart showers. We're going to have a look at the pros and cons of getting them, the advantages that they have over other types of shower and also the installation considerations that you should think of if you're going to purchase one of these beasts. There's links to more information on Plumwell's website in the description below but before you click on that let's see if we can address some of the questions that you sent to Plumwell and let's get on with this video. So firstly, what is a smart shower? We've got three lovely smart showers behind us here from a few different manufacturers, and we're gonna talk a little bit about these in a few minutes, so don't go anywhere. So a smart shower for me, for a plumber, for someone who's installing, how I describe that for my customer, a shower that is digitally controlled, has the mixing of the water being done digitally, so it's not you mixing it by hand on a mixer shower or a bar shower, and we'll be doing a video about those soon as well, but also it's a shower that has a digital digital capability to work with an app on your phone or with a digital interface within the shower itself. Hopefully that's what you need to know about that. They also often have a display on them that will show you the current flow rate, the temperature and loads of other things as well. But that's not all. A lot of digital smart showers these days have profiles on them as well. So you could say, oh, I've got my profile, um, my shower, I want it to be at 29 degrees and it's gonna last for five minutes and that's it. Whereas my wife, who is made of asbestos, will have hers at 50 degrees and it will last for about 45 minutes. Another thing, if you want this capability, lots of them work with things like Amazon Alexa and like Google Home Hubs and all the other type of voice command automation things you get in your house. So you could be down in the kitchen and say, Alexa, turn the shower on in five minutes time. For me, I much prefer to just go out there and press the button, but you know, everyone's got their own things that they want in their home. And that's why all these manufacturers make all different types of shower. And that's why Plum World sell all different types of shower to cover you. So if you want this particular product, you want that functionality, you can get it. So what advantages do um, digital showers, smart showers have over your standard shower. The main advantage I would say is accuracy. You've got a digital sensor that is sensing the water temperature coming out into your shower and that is mixing the water constantly all the time to make sure that the temperature of your shower is exactly what you've set it at within the degree. Okay, you're not, you're not going to get that kind of control and accuracy on a standard bar mixer shower. But then again, there's different price points there to consider as well. Bar mixer showers are generally cheaper. Also, you've got cutoff protections for things like high water temperature. You don't want to get scalded, do you, in the shower? And these showers have the capability to read. So say someone flushes the loo somewhere, the shower's going to know that suddenly the, the cold water feed coming in has changed and it's going to balance and alter accordingly to stop it so you don't get that horrible moment where the hot water comes through. Or even worse, the other way around, someone opens up the hot tap in the kitchen, you're having a shower, it shouldn't go freezing cold because the digital shower knows what's going on and it's like, oh, I need to change what's going on there. Another advantage they have, and if we look at this Myra Activate that we've got here, is they tend to have less kind of clutter in the shower room. I know this is more of an aesthetic personal thing. For me, I'm like, I don't really want loads of fittings, fixtures and bits and pieces in the shower. Um, there's less clutter in the shower room. They, they're aesthetically more pleasing, I'd say. But we've got a nice, outlet there, a very sort of nice sleek modern riser, and then a pan head coming out of the top up there. So hopefully that's gonna show you that there's not a lot of clutter. We will be talking about the controllers in a second, because you usually have a little controller as well, a little round controller that goes with this, if you wanna use that. Remember, you could use your phone. Another advantage is automation. So we can say, shower come on for this amount of time, at this temperature, and then go off at this time. Probably one of the most useful things parents could have for teenagers. Set every shower up, you've got five minutes, use it or lose it. Another thing is water saving. Like you don't have to have one of these thrashing out vast gallons of water all the time. You can have very easily set economy settings. So you have less liters coming through. They can control the flow of the water coming through 
as well as the temperature incredibly accurately. That's a massive advantage if you're looking to save water, if you're looking to save money on your heating and energy bills, which as we all know at the moment is quite a big deal. Another massive advantage, and I think this is the biggest advantage that digital smart showers have over different types of shower, is the fact you can have multiple outlet configurations. Now, We've got a standard, we've got an Aqualiza here. We've got a standard wall outlet going up to this riser on here. You could just have one of these if you wanted, just this riser bit here, if that was what you wanted to have. You could go onto the Plum World website and say, I want the single outlet one or whatever. It might, doesn't have to be an Aqualiza, it could be any other type. If that's what you want, a single outlet digital smart shower, they exist. But we've also got up here, look, a ceiling fed pan head. And that's all coming from one place. We've got the smart valve and then we've got outlet A and outlet B on this here. So what happens is this mixes the water to a certain temperature. It goes into here and this directs it to outlet A, which could be this, and outlet B that could be up there. But the one thing I really want you to understand and take away from this is the fact that it is a ceiling fed pan head. All right, so let's move on. Move on to this Myra here. Slightly different way of doing things here with this digital box and we'll talk about installation considerations in a minute when it comes to these boxes themselves because as a plumber that's the bit that I'm really sort of passionate about. So we've got outlet one and outlet two and then we've got the hot and cold. Everything is happening within this box here. We don't have another box like we've got there. We've got a standard outlet here going up to a nice handset and then look what we've got here. We've got a pan head but it's not coming out the ceiling this time is it? It's coming out of a wall outlet. That's what it's coming out of. So you've got, just right next to each other, multiple ways of doing this. And it's very easy for us to divert from that to that, or even both, yeah? I've got a shower at home that does both at the same time. It's a digital shower. And then moving on here, very similar stuff. We've got a, another Myra, slightly different box, hot and cold in. And then we've got our two different outlets here. Yet again, we've got a handset. We've got a ceiling mounted uh, pan head coming out of the top there, but what's different about the handset? What's different? On these ones, we've got wall outlet. So our water is being fed through here up to the handset. On this one, we've hidden the feed inside the riser rail and it goes up into the ceiling and we connect up using this pipe here in the ceiling when we do our installation. If you don't want to have a pipe going down through the wall and you're happier with the pipe work and therefore any potential leaks being outside of the wall, then one of these is going to be a really, really good choice. The most important bit, installation considerations. Now I've got some notes over there that I'm going to grab for this bit because for me, I don't want to get this wrong for you guys. I want you guys to get to, to understand exactly what's going on. And I'm also going to give you a couple of little tips as well as to what to think about when you're, when you're feeding the wires down if you've got a wired controller. This is the Myra Platinum, right? A Platinum boy! And look at the lovely interface on the Myra Platinum. So we've got one on here. There we go. It's got the time on it. How about that? We've got this interface on here. This will talk to the digital unit in here, okay? And is what controls everything. You'll be able to see everything on here. Uh, you'll be able to divert to different outlets change the temperature and all that sort of stuff. You should look on Plum World's website if you're going to buy this one here and think how far and how many walls can this work through to talk to that digital outlet. That's something you've got to think about, isn't it? If you're going to fit this 20 metres away and this isn't going to get a signal, you need to think about that. It does look really nice, this one here. And look, it's powered by AA batteries, so we don't need to worry about running a wire to it. That would just be there, like so. Remember what I said, we will come back to how these should be installed in a minute. It's very easy because they actually put it on the front on a sticker, but we'll talk about it in a sec. Another thing you need to think about, so we've got these two here are wired. So their controllers do not send a signal over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. They use a electrical signal through a wire. Now, what do you think we have to think about there? How long is the wire? That's number one, isn't it? Most of them tend to come with about 10 meters of wire on them. And that means you've got a lot of flexibility as to where you can install this, how far away from this and this it can be. Let's have a quick look at the controller for this one here. So look, we've got this one here. Uh, and as you can see on the back of it, we've got a plug. Uh, and then at the other end, for this particular model here, we've got an Ethernet cable. And look how much lead we've got, yeah? There's one thing that I've seen people do that I've been called around people's houses to sort out is when someone has chopped this and tried to shorten it. It's in the instructions, don't do it. So you've got this little Ethernet here. That will, we've got the controllers here, look at that. 
I could just plug in up there like so. And then, yeah, look, look at all this. Look how far we can go. So the other side of the studio, so that's quite a lot of lead there, isn't it? Yeah, this just fits on the wall inside, just like that next to everything else and looks absolutely beautiful. And again, with the Aqualiza, there's more than one wire we've got on this one because we've got a link wire going from this to this. Yeah, so we can divert to outlet A and outlet B if we want to. Yet again, I'm not going to unravel this one. We've got our long cable here. There's about 10 meters of cable on this. I think we've got a couple of meters of cable on here because these are always, when you're installing these, you're going to try and put them as close together as possible. I mean, they're pretty much going to be fitted, they're installed like they are now. And look, a lovely Aqualisa controller on there. Nice bit of kit. So you can imagine that just sat on there next to that. Beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. So we've got control wires coming from the control box going down to this here. Now this is a tip that I've put on my YouTube channel and you're gonna get here today. It's gonna save you so much trouble in the future. When you install one of these on the wall, duct this wire. And when I say duct it, I mean get a bit of 22 mil flexible plastic pipe Put that behind the wall, up to where you think it's going to come out. Feed this down that pipe. A really easy way to do it is to attach a bit of string on there, pop the string down the hole, suck the string down to the other end with a hoover, and then pull it down. If you ever have to, in the future, change this over and it requires a different wire, and you've laid it in the adhesive of the tiles or something like that, then guess what? You're going to have to take all the tiles off. But that's not going to happen now, is it? Because you've ducted it, because I told you to. So that is my really, really like neat little I mean, I'm really proud of that, and I think you could probably tell how proud I am of that tip. Next thing, and for some of you, this isn't going to be important because maybe you're thinking of just buying it and getting someone to fit it, but maybe you're here thinking about, oh, I'm going to install this myself because I'm a DIYer and I love doing stuff like that. It's just installation considerations for the digital boxes. So, for example, we've got which way up they can be. Can they be flat on the floor? Can they be like this? And we've got helpful diagrams for these to tell us exactly which way up they should be. There's reasons for this. I don't know what they are, but they say don't put them up upside down. So guess what? Don't put it up upside down. Same thing here, look, mounting configuration. Only fix the digital mixing valve in one of the following configurations. Da, da, da. Unfortunately, we've got one of those configurations now. So for example, it doesn't say install it like that, does it? Okay, it doesn't say that. And it's the same for this one over here, yet again, mounting position on that. The other thing that you need to think about is access to these. Do not put them under some floorboards and just tile the floor over or something like that. You know, you're going to need to get to these sometimes. I mean, what I usually find I do as a plumber, if you can't get loft access uh, very easily, you can sometimes hide these under the sloped end of a bath. So you can put them under the bath um, and then, you know, all your feeds can run up behind the bath to where you're going out. Generally, you're going to find these on the floor in a loft above the shower um, and then everything feeds down through the wall cavity, through our ducting, um, into the outlets that you, you, you've got for whichever configuration that you've chosen. Another thing is every one of these showers here is supplied with push fit valves. I'll get some. Hold on, I'll get some for you. So just like these, these little babies here, they've got arrows on them, which says the water should go that way. So guess what? If, I'm, if the hot's going in that way, there's the arrow. I'll pop it on there and push it on there like that. If it's on an outlet, look at that, the arrow goes away. And finally, you probably thought, oh, he's forgotten all about water pressure and supply types. Well, you're wrong. I'm going to talk about it now. So wake up at the back. Water supplies. Now, all of these ones here can do different things. And each one of these manufacturers will make digital smart showers for the different types of water supply that we've got. So for instance, I would see the worst type of supply, it's weird, isn't it, trying to rank water supplies as being gravity fed. Gravity fed is, is a tank in the loft with water just coming down. It's the head pressure is created by the force of water falling down to the shower head. You can get these with inbuilt pumps in them to increase the water pressure. So not only do you get that digital smart um, use as well, but you also get an increase in water pressure. So make sure if you're going to buy one that that's what it's for. This one here is for high pressure slash combination boiler. This one here is for high pressure and combi as well. But just make sure when you're buying one of these that A, you know what type of water supply you have. So if you've got a massive tank in the loft, a big like black plastic tank full of 40 gallons worth of water, or you can open up the hot tap in the bathroom and put your thumb over it and actually stop it. 
um, that probably means you've got gravity fed. If you don't know, ask your plumber. If it's pressurized, when you try and put your thumb over that tap, you're not gonna stop that water coming out. You're gonna get wet, it's gonna be great. Um, and also, if you've got a combi boiler, you're gonna know that anyway, because you, you don't have a big hot water tank in an airing cupboard. Um, you've just got your boiler on the wall, usually in the utility room or the kitchen. So that's the things that I think you should think about, okay? When it comes to installation, orientation of this, duct your wires if you've got wires, know the water supplies that you've got, and finally, make sure that if you've got one of these mounts out here, and one of these mounts out here, when you're installing one of these, make sure you've got a really nice sound wall to screw everything into so it doesn't fall off in the end, okay? I hope you've found this video somewhat enlightening and slightly infuriating because there's so much choice, especially when it comes to the outlets and look at all those beautiful outlets. If you need any more help, click on the link to Plum World below. There's loads of product descriptions, downloads, bits and pieces. So if you find this shower here, you'll be able to go to Plum World's site and actually download the whole manual. If you've got any questions, comment them below. We'll see if Plum World can help you out in some of your questions, maybe address them in another video. Of course, hit the subscribe button, hit the like, hit the notification bell so you don't miss another upload from Plum World. Thanks for watching guys, see you soon. Goodbye. So we've got all these wires, we've got wires coming, you've got wires coming in, you've got wires going out of your skin. I hate that song. Anyway, so you've got wires coming from this. <laughs> so you've got wires. <laughs> So you've got wires coming from this Myra shower hit. So, so say we've got a control wire. So we've got control wires coming from the control box